because I, I think it's pretty informative. Um, uh, first of all, I, I actually, before I look at the new cases, I actually look at our bed capacity because the, the way that the cases are reported, um, sometimes we can get a case reported within three days, five days. Sometimes it takes two or three weeks to get a case reported. And so that's really a long way in the rearview mirror. Whereas the hospital capacity key metrics, I think are a lot more real time because the hospitals report those, these metrics of occupied beds, daily beds, bed capacity, and ventilators. They report those on a daily basis to the rack and then the rack updates this. And so uh, uh, what this uh, uh, tells us is that uh, uh, we started uh, back with elective surgeries a couple of weeks ago, and we still have a lot of uh, available uh, uh, beds. So we've got 2,000 uh, out of 5,300. So roughly, uh, you know, we've got about 40% capacity, if I do my math right, maybe uh, 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 you know, 35, something like that. That's a, that's a really good place to be. Um, uh, most of the time, you know, pre-COVID, we were probably running uh, uh, maybe, you know, 80, 85% occupancy. We're probably only running about 60% occupancy right now. And so uh, this is something that we're going to want to uh, keep an eye on as we continue to uh, uh, open up. Um, look here at the uh, case counts. Brian, can you see that? And you can kind of see my cursor moving around? Yes. So, so this is our federal prison, right? You heard about all of these uh, 483, you know, case counts in one day. Almost all of those were the federal prison. And here's another catch up on, on the federal prison. And, and, you know, we've never gone before 150 in any one uh, day. And so one of the things that we're trying to do as we uh, think about the modeling that I'm gonna show you in a, middle, in a little bit is to say, how can we begin to kind of get some of these um, prisons, especially the nursing home, homes out of the models? Because what we want to do with the models is we want to really show community impact and what's really going on in the community, not necessarily uh, our institutions. Now, that being said, institutions are a big problem. And if we've got even one case in a nursing home, uh, that's a big problem. But we we, we treat that a lot differently than we do uh, the, the, the regular uh, community spread. So uh, the next thing I wanna show you is this uh, curve on the right here. This is called the uh, uh, epidemic curve. And you can kind of see how over, you, you know, the, the past couple of weeks or so, it's kind of starting to, to flatten out and we're kind of getting into this uh, new norm. and and. What I think this is telling us is that you know COVID is uh, going to be here for a while. It's uh, it's it's the um, uh, the 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 house guest that you just can't get rid of, and uh, it's gonna gonna be with us for a while because but but what we seem to be doing with our uh, non pharmacological inter interventions of social distancing and masking, with our gradual reopening, with the additional um, uh, things that we put in place in our uh, uh, restaurants and and our other you know uh, limiting our, our public gatherings at least seems to be controlling it to the point that it's not uh, out of uh, com just not, not completely out of control so uh, Brian here are some of the most recent uh, project projections updated as of uh, uh, Monday um, so again, I think you've seen this before. This is the doubling rate and the number of days that it's taken for the cases to double. And you can, you can see a whole lot of uh, a variation. Uh, it's, it's really choppy. And a lot of this is because we use the actual uh, 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 reports from the uh, uh, departments of uh, public health, which uh, I think I mentioned this to you uh, once, la once last time that you know, these larger labs are just overwhelmed with processing the uh, specimens and what they will do is they will batch report their positive specimens to either Dallas or Tarrant County Public Health. And um, 
So a health department will get in a whole batch of uh, positives that vary anywhere from specimen collection of three days ago to 10 days ago to 14 days ago. And so, um, uh, but, but you can still see, you know, kind of some, some trends here. You can see that the that, that Tarrant County uh, just kind of, you know, uh, continues to up its doubling rate, which is what we want because the higher the doubling rate, the slower the, uh, the, the spread. Um, uh, Dallas uh, was looking really good uh, between, let's say, the last week of April and the first week of May. That's that green line that kind of uh, uh, shows the peak there. And uh, for whatever reason, there they've um, I had some rocky times over the past uh, couple of weeks or so. I, I look at Terrence as kind of a, you know, we're, we're just steady as she goes, and we're just continuing to learn how to do this, and we're to continuing to uh, uh, get better, and that, you know, Colin and Denton, you know, continue to be in, in, in a really good shape of a, of a doubling time of, of well over uh, 30 days. Again, uh, these are the uh, uh, daily uh, case counts, and, and you can tell that uh, this kind of goes along with the slide before that Dallas has really had a, a rough uh, couple of weeks here, whereas Tarrant, uh, uh, you know, seems to just kind of uh, uh, be on this, on this uh, uh, much more of a, of a, of a slower path. Uh, and you can see that little uh, blip there, uh, that has to do with the, uh, the, the, the jail uh, uh, over this uh, uh, most past uh, 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 recent weekend. So this is the RT. Um, this is the ex estimated reproductive number uh, for COVID-19 and DFW. And, and what you want to be is you, you want to be below one because when you're below one, the epidemic uh, gradually uh, uh, goes, goes away. Uh, when you're at one, it's kind of a steady state and then when you're above one, uh, that's when the epidemic is growing. And so uh, you can tell that uh, uh, over the past uh, two weeks or so, uh, Tarrant County in the uh, bottom right hand graph here has been either uh, below the uh, uh, line or right at the line uh, over uh, the uh, past couple of weeks or so. And that uh, uh, Dallas is, um, uh, was, was doing pretty good a couple of weeks ago and for whatever reason they are uh, uh, starting to have a, 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 a tough time and, and, and more cases there. So the, the other thing that this uh, uh, shows you uh, along with the prior uh, uh, graphs and, and measurements is we don't really use any one model to say this is where we are or this is where we think we're going. We're looking at several different uh, ways of looking at the data in order to try to almost uh, build together a, uh, a mosaic. I think this is a very interesting slide. Uh, this has to do with Dallas County um, uh, and uh, uh, but I, I wouldn't suspect that Tarrant County is a whole lot different in that um, we put our hospitalization rates and we uh, graph those according to uh, uh, age and uh, what you can see is that our hospital hospitalization rates uh, continue to uh, go uh, down in, in, in all age categories. Uh, that, that at the, and, and at the very beginning of this, uh, way back March 15th, more than 40% of the people were uh, getting hospitalized and now only about 12% of the people are getting hospitalized. I think this is really a reflection of our ability to uh, really ramp up testing and get those symptomatic people uh, tested and confirmed and quarantined at home and uh, not just having to save the uh, tests for the really, really sick people the way that we were doing in the, uh, in the middle part of March. Uh, but I also um, want to point out to you that uh, the COVID hospitalizations continue to be uh, 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 more than double in the 60 plus uh, age group and then uh, uh, only a 10% of the uh, uh, cases that are found positive are uh, hospitalized in the 20 to 25 uh, uh, degree uh, uh, or it's 20 to 59 age group. And that uh, kids are, although they can certainly be uh, tested and confirmed positive, it's very, very rare to, ha to very have rare. to hospitalize somebody for less than 20 with uh, COVID uh, disease. Um, 
Uh, again, uh, this is Dallas County, but you can say the, the, the Tarrant County is, is the same. Um, if, if you look at the blue line on May the 1st, uh, we would have thought that we were in uh, really good uh, shape here because the a number of cases uh, really were uh, starting to trend down. But uh, a week later, the county uh, uh, revises the number of reports that they get uh, between May 1st and May 8th that were actually tested on May 1st. And boom, you you see this go go up, and so uh, the the ability for us to be able to get more real time case reports continues to be a struggle, and that's the reason I think that that uh, we are really starting to rely a lot more on our hospital capacity as a more real time uh, measurement of what's really going on in the community, rather than these uh, case reports. And, and quite frankly, whenever you turn on the news and you hear X number of new cases in Tarrant County today or or X number of new cases in Dallas County, I, I don't really, I, I think that's more of a soundbite than a uh, true data point because I think you have to put all of these uh, uh, together. Uh, these are uh, now the uh, Tarrant County hospitalization uh, uh, rates and kind of a look back and it looks like the graph here is starting to level off kind of uh, what I showed you from the uh, uh, Tarrant County uh, statistics where it looks like, you know, we still have uh, somewhere about uh, between 60 and 70% of our beds, which are occupied, meaning that we have somewhere between 40 and uh, 30 and 40% uh, open bed capacity. And that, that we've kind of reached somewhat of a, a steady state uh, 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 in that in uh, Tarrant County. And again, uh, you know, predicting what our hospitalizations uh, rates might be going forward around this, what we call this 90% uh, confidence level that around uh, June the 1st, uh, looks like that we might need potentially an additional 200 to 300 beds beyond uh, where we are right now. Uh, but uh, also remembering that uh, uh, we have, you know, close to 2000 open beds in uh, Tarrant County. Uh, this is the last slide uh, showing that uh, even before uh, the governor's order where we began to uh, reopen, people were just getting uh, uh, cabin fever, getting stir crazy. And um, we wanted to have people shelter in place, stay at home, be safe for uh, a two to three week period. And people can, can do that for about two weeks. And then after that, uh, beginning in the third week of April, people uh, just uh, human nature said, look, you know, we're we're social beings, we're not used to being cooped up, and you can start to see that, that we had more movement uh, really across uh, all of the counties uh, in, in North Texas. So I'll uh, be happy to uh, stop there and uh, take any questions that you might have.